Congratulations on completing the enrollment and trying out MPEX track. In this particular demo, we would be illustrating how to purchase the product and then how to set up the initial configurations. So I log in with the initial ID that I had used while enrolling with the product. And I come back to the uh, the, the home page that I was using. I click on the purchase now button right at the top. There are various options which are available to me. Uh, based on what I'm looking for, I can select any one of them. In the enrollment, as you would have realized, you had all the options available enabled for you. So we let's assume that we want to buy the performance appraisal system. So we go to the performance edition. We identify the number of employees for whom we want it for. And we also want the goal setting. So the pricing shows up right out there and I want to pay annually in advance. I've got various options available. The annual payment gives me a 12.5% discount. So I finalize the purchase and the details show up, the module that I'd selected, the initial amount, the next billing amount, and the next billing date. And I provide my credit card. The credit card payments are through our provider Stripe, and they're absolutely safe. So I enter my email ID, I enter my card number, I enter the date of expiry and the CVC and I check out. This would directly go to Stripe. We do not store any credit card details and then this would come back and complete the purchase. So it says your payment is processed successfully. Uh, an email would have come to me on this email ID which would indicate the successful purchase. The next step is I log out from the system I log back in entering my email ID again and now this recognizes that I am a customer and there is a setup checklist. There are various things out here which include cleaning up all the transactions which were available in the system, redefining the time period and the financial period, clearing all the employees, updating the company details, setting up my logo and you know the address of the information updating the time settings, updating the administrator login details and setting up an HR manager. We would be going through each one of these steps. So the first thing that I do is clear all the transactions. Why we need to do it is, so all the transactions are cleared. Now we go and clear the financial periods. Without the cleaning up of the financial and the time period, the dates for these cannot be changed. So the default date, for instance, may be from 1st January to 31st December and your financial year follows a different time period, then this would not clean up. Now I'm going and clearing all the demo employees. So all the employees are also gone. The next thing we go required in cases, the company information is required. And the moment I update this, a checkbox shows here. The next thing is we go and set up our financial periods. Uh, our week starts on a Sunday and the date format is the US date format rather than a European date format. Now I can go and say that my financial year is a calendar year and my time period is the same as the financial year. So we go and create financial periods. We say from 2015 to 2018 we want to create the time periods and since it's a calendar year it would automatically pick up 1st January to 31st December. So all of those time periods are generated and the next thing is we go and select which one is the current one. Since we are running 2015 we mark it as the current one and we can add more time periods as and when they are going to be required. Same thing we go and use the time periods. The time periods are the same as the financial period but we still need to generate them and we could have a separate date for them if required. So 2018 again and we generate them. So we are done. We set up there. So it goes and says that this thing is also done. 
we could update the administrator login details so do remember to keep the details of it now the last step out here is adding the HR manager here we can set up an employee number for the HR manager let's say this is one we set up a username which would typically be the same as the employee number and we set a password out here the set the name as Martin Smith gender is male we put in our email ID we put in a date of birth and a date of joining these are by these because they are used in a product and once we have said that we are good to go so now you can see the continue button is enabled post the use of this continue button once we click on continue we'll be logged out again and we'll have to log in back again so we type in Martin Smith and then mid-size company and we log in and our system is completely configured so I'm logged in as the administrator I can go in there and then the next thing that I need to do is upload the employee information to upload employee information you download the Excel sheet which is to be used you fill in the information and then you upload it back out here so there are four steps download the file add employee data to those columns the first row of the file should not have any changes from what was downloaded and then you click on browse and upload the same file back and all the employees would be added and that's all what we have for a demo hope you would be in a position to complete the entire purchasing process our support team is always available in case you have got any questions thank you